Countdown for blast off. X minus five, four, three, two, X minus one, fire. From the far horizons of the unknown come transcribed tales of new dimensions in time and space. These are stories of the future, adventures in which you'll live in a million could be years on a thousand maybe worlds. The National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, presents X minus one. Tonight's story, Ray Bradbury's Dwellers in Silence. Twenty years had passed. Twenty years since the last of the giant migration ships had crashed to the surface of Mars, bearing its pitiful handful of survivors of the Earth Wars. Twenty years of scratching at the stubborn Martian soil. Twenty years of trying to devise new engines that would use the strange fuel they found on Mars. Twenty years of longing, of turning eyes toward the green Earth as it hung on the horizon like a beckoning light. And now it was done. The first new ship, built of shining Martian chromaton, had lifted bravely toward home with three men locked in its metal belly. Would they return to an Earth made barren by atomic fallout and dust, to a blackened, radioactive hell? Or would they find intelligence still alive on the scourged planet? What had twenty years of death and radioactivity done to our beloved Earth? There it is. You can barely see the top of the atomic trade building in the twilight. They never finished building. Captain! What is it? Am I going out of my mind? Look, out that way, to the west. Could that my be? Heaven, it is. Those are lights. Turn the ship. Full cruising speed. They are lights. Captain, it's a city, a whole blasted city lit up like a Christmas tree. What do you think of your dead planet now, William? Decelerate to negative five. We're going to take her down. Unbelievable. We've been walking for hours now and not a soul to be seen. There must be someone. How do you explain the light? Unless they've been burning like this for 20 years. I don't know. Municipal building. We have a look here, sir. Possibly the records might contain some. Good idea. Keep your weapons ready. We'll start right here with the city clerk's office. Better check radiation again, Doctor. Well, not enough to do any damage. Gives you the creeps, doesn't it? Look at this desk. Papers crumpled, ink stand, just as if somebody came in and worked here every day. Dog licenses, hunting permit. That's strange. Hmm? There's ink in that ink stand. Well, what of it? Well, you'd think standing open for 20 years it would have dried up. Good heavens. If I hadn't heard it with my own ears, 
Evans, did that phone ring? Yes. Well, pick it up, doctor. Hello? Good day, doctor. How are you? I called to ask some advice about a trepanning problem. Can you tell me if the lateral cut should be made first? Hello. Hello. This is absolutely insane. Hello. Thank you, doctor. I'll do that. Uh, by the way, how is your wife, Alice? And the girls? And your son, John. Fine boy, John. I'll call again tomorrow. Goodbye, doctor. Hello. Hello. Huh. Gone dead. Who was it? I don't know. Strange voice carried on a conversation about some surgical operation without paying the slightest attention to anything I said. Captain, what is it? Listen. Someone is coming, walking slowly toward the corridor. Coming closer. Jumping Jupiter. It's a man. An old man. Are you... Is it really someone? You seem to be real. I saw the ship come down, and I thought perhaps I was losing my mind. It's been so many years. I'm Captain John Parsons. These are my assistants, Dr. Evans and Mr. Williams. We returned to Earth from Mars. Then, then it's happened. When we're not alone anymore. Forgive me, gentlemen, if I, if I seem moved. I've waited and hoped for so long. You survived the radiation. We did. There are others. My family. We are the only ones. I answered the phone a moment ago. Who was it? You heard my voice, Doctor. Yours? Yes. To break the loneliness. I've recorded my voice and rigged up an automatic telephone. It's pleasant to hear the phone ring. I, I come here to work. I take it you are a medical man. My name is Cornelius Hathaway. Hathaway? Hathaway the brain surgeon? You know my name. Who doesn't? I watched you on television at college. Why, I saw you 20, 23 years ago. You performed a difficult surgery for a cerebral tumor. Thank you. I had almost forgotten. My, my mind, you see, I, well, I, I'm almost 80 now. Well, you look fine, sir. We've had the best of everything, an entire city to choose from, cold storage, the best equipment. But come, 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 there's a fine dinner waiting for you, and, and you'll want to meet my family. When I saw the ship come down, I told Alice, my wife, you know, to prepare a feast. This, this is a great day for me, gentlemen, a great, great day. <laughs> Come out to the porch and see who we have here. Alice, you hear? Come out. My wife, gentlemen. Alice, Captain Parson, Dr. Evans, Mr. Williams. How do you do, that way? How do you do? And uh, now, if you will follow me in, gentlemen, we'll meet my children. Oh, beautiful woman. He looks no more than 35. Because the radiation is coming. Hmm? I don't know. And these are my daughters, Susan and Marguerite. And my son, John. How do you do? How do you do? Sit down, gentlemen. Sit down. We'll have a feast in honor of this occasion. Susan, Marguerite, get the best silverware and the damask napkins. And John, fetch the champagne. Yes. Uh, excuse me a moment, John. Sir? Uh, how old are you? Twenty-three, sir. Thank you. What is it, Captain? Something wrong? Uh, nothing. Except that it's impossible. You see, Dr. Hathaway's son was already in college when I started.